right, we're here at my indoor tiny worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we kind of did a spread out feeding over the surface. And then we put a bunch of wet shredded cardboard on top. And it looks like we've got a bit of a sprout right here from something that we fed. Let's go ahead and get this piece of newspaper off. And it has definitely seen better days. It's got a big hole right there in the center. So probably gonna have to replace this. So one of the unique items that we put in here was a loofah sponge. We're hoping to see the worms all in and out of it. And maybe, maybe it would become a cocoon factory because I know the worms like to kind of rub their cocoons off. And there it is right there. We're gonna keep digging for it. The other thing I, we want to check on was the moisture level. This bin is 47 days old and it's been 12 days since we were in here. So we just want to kind of see how the moisture level is doing and adjust from there. And then finally, I want to see if I can up the feeding levels. We started with 500 worms. I'm sure after 47 days, we probably have even more in here. Let me see what we've got right now. I'm seeing a worm definitely inside of it, a couple right there. And maybe on the bottom. Yep, they're definitely liking to tie themselves in and out of it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now this is a little piece of loofah. I put a bigger piece in our outdoor worm bin, but we're going to go ahead and set this to the side and let them keep going at it. Very, very cool. All right, so let's see if there's any of that food left. And now we had put in some tomato, carrots, some strawberry tops, pepper tops, an apple core, and some potato peels. And I think the only thing we might find after 12 days would be that apple core. And I think it was somewhere up over here. And I'm not seeing it. So I think that we can up the feeding for these worms. They are doing fantastic. And certainly where any of that food was and in the center of it where the plastic was there are lots of worms and lots of moisture so things are looking really nice in here i'm very happy with this so let's kind of explore the corners after i dig right through here again looking good we're also seeing more of their castings coming out so that's great We'll go down in the corner here and see how dry it is, just kind of on the top. I think otherwise it's doing pretty good. Check this corner right here. And same thing, just a little, little crusty shredded bedding right there on the top, so not too bad. One of the things that I like to do with this tiny bin is I like to aerate the whole thing so that all the shredded cardboard gets mixed up. And the thing with a, a small bin like this, one, it's going to have smaller numbers. You know, we just started with 500. You're not going to want to put 2,000 worms in a three-gallon worm bin and it's three gallons but I mean it's only filled halfway but what can happen with a bin like this is the parameters are a little bit harder to stabilize so you'll get some dryness oh real quick let's look at this fat chubby guy right, right there I say guy but they are hermaphrodites they have both female and male organs so when they reproduce they slide right by each other and they both perform both the male and female functions and both of them end up with a cocoon on them that they kind of wiggle out of check that out that's a that looks like a little piece of tomato and a little baby worm right there but this is kind of the slice of tomato that we put in just the end of it and you can see they eat all all the flesh all the way up to this just almost like a waxy skin that the tomato produces so very cool so things are looking great things are looking really good in here I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit more and then I think what we're gonna do is I think I'm gonna go back to a trench feeding maybe I'll alternate Okay, we've got our trench right there. I've got this loofah and you can see the worms have kind of dug into the center. I see a couple little worm butts right there. So I'm gonna kind of leave that to the side and maybe I'll put it on top of the feeding. So first thing, we're gonna add just a little bit of dampened shredded cardboard right here. And something I'm noticing is I've got the volume up pretty high. I think with that last feeding where I'd put it all on top and then put the bedding on top, I just kind of brought this bin up a little bit higher than I like to at this point. I mean, I've got these parts that I don't wanna have the bin up above. So just a little bit of bedding right there. And here's what we had in mind to feed. No, I'm not gonna feed all this. I'm gonna feed all of this right here. And I'm just gonna pick out some of these faster foods in here. All right, so in we go right there. Get some of that stuff out. It looks like what we have here is a bunch of fast food. We've got a lettuce stock with a bunch of strawberry tops attached to it, a little bit of a tomato, some carrots, which have a lot of sugar in them, and the worms really enjoy them. We've got some tomato tops and slices, and this is a little uh, cocoon end and butt from my garden. Cocoons or uh, cucumbers. <laughs> I said cocoons, I meant cucumbers, are growing really quickly in my garden, so we're really enjoying those. And I think I'm going to put some 
watermelon in there. So in goes watermelon. I don't know if you saw my last Vermi Hut video, but oh my gosh, we did a top feeding and I put a huge piece of watermelon in there. And after we're up to seven days right now and the worms, oh my gosh, you, ju you just have to see it. The new video will be released in a couple days, but go back and check out the old video. And I do think I want to give them a piece of some slower food here. Now, I think we put an apple core in last time and it was gone, but this is kind of the slowest thing that I'm seeing that we have in here, another apple core. And let me just kind of push stuff down because I'm going to put amendments in here and then I need to make sure I bury all of this stuff. I think, think the loofah is going to go right there. And luckily, I have an executive producer that reminds me of things when I forget them. And one of the things she reminded me of is I want to use this newspaper as bedding. So let's just kind of stick it down here like that. And I can just chomp that up. So in go the amendments. This is just some expired grains and coconut sugar, coconut flakes that I just kind of blended up in my magic bullet blender that I use to grind our coffee, make shakes, that kind of thing. And I'll tell you what, if you don't have one, grab one because they're great for a worm bin and great for breakfast. But I've got some links on my first pinned comment and the description page. And next, we'll just go in with some coffee grounds. Every time we make coffee, I save the grounds in this little container and kind of let them age and get a little mold and just some more food for them to eat, both the fungi with the mold and also the beans themselves. And then finally, I like to go in with some pulverized eggshells. My face is pretty far away from here. Don't breathe this stuff in. But again, I use the Magic Bullet Blender in order to take those eggshells that we have after I just kind of rinse them off and dry them and make them into almost kind of a powder. I mean, this is really tiny and the worms can use that as grit to break down their food further. But when you do use it, just reserve one of your Magic Bullet Blender cups because this is like sandpaper and it will kind of make a cloudy kind of tinge to it just because it kind of scrapes it up. So 47 days since we started this bin and 12 days since we fed it last with 500 worms. This is a pretty big feeding, especially after like I think three or four weeks ago, I said, you know, don't overfeed. But I'm listening to the worm bin and it is telling me that it can eat more food. So that's what I'm doing. Every time I feed it, I check the feeding zone. Are they eating more food? Have they eaten everything? If they, ha if they have, then I will increase what I feed them. So let's go ahead and kind of make sure we get this pushed down. And let's bury it up. And if I don't have enough from the side, I'll just add a little bit more on the top. So things are looking great. I mean, lots of worms all over the place. I think I mentioned in one of my other videos that I tend to get population booms in the summer, even in my indoor bins, certainly in my outdoor bins, but even my indoor bins just really, really tend to eat a lot and get more worms. So that is exactly what's happening here. So we've got a new piece of paper. We'll just put that right there for them. It's a good light block and captures a little bit of the moisture, but this is what really does it. Just having a little piece of plastic over it really helps to knock that moisture back into the bin as it kind of evaporates up into it. And we've got some area over here, so the bin is still breathable. I could actually use a little bit bigger piece of plastic, but so far this is looking good for me. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now. Okay.